I am learning to observe forces such as gravity and magnetism acting on objects. Hey third graders, welcome to our Magnetism and Gravity Unit. And what will we be doing? We are going to be given opportunities to... Most people think that gravity is a force that simply pulls down. Gravity! <laughs> but they would be wrong. In fact, gravity pulls more like a tug of war. And just as in a tug of war, Size. And distance are very important in determining who wins this tug of war. Take this football, for example. Notice how the force of my push allowed the ball to move away from the earth. But as soon as it hits the apex of the arc, the tug of war between our planet and the ball begins. Larger, larger than the ball. Ha ha! Has no problem winning the fight. This is the same reason people don't fly off the earth. <laughs> because we're constantly losing the tug of war with the center of the earth. Extend the learning. Explain to me how it's possible that us here in Austin, Texas, where Bob Wills is still the king, and people who live all the way over in Oyster Bay, Mauritania, which is in the continent of Africa, wrong. It's actually in Mauritius, which is way off the eastern coast of Africa. It can be pulled directly towards each other. The only hint I'm going to give you is for you to define the word antipode. What happens when we get farther away from the Earth? Without the pull of gravity, objects just float. Is the moon just floating too? Remember the tug of war? The moon is about a quarter the size of the Earth, or Earth is about four times bigger than the moon. That means the Earth is winning the tug of war, but the moon is also trying its hardest to pull back. The moon's pull actually has an effect on Earth that we can see. As the moon circles the Earth, it pulls entire oceans around with it. We see this as high and low tides. Do we see the effects of Earth's gravity any other way? All the time! On Earth, we experience the force of gravity every day. For example, when students jump up. Gravity pulls them back down to Earth. When a ball is thrown into the air, Gravity pulls it back down to Earth. The pull of gravity is so strong that rockets need tremendous escape velocity just to get into orbit. Things in nature move downward due to gravity. Mountain rivers slow down to the ocean, and glaciers push slowly down a mountain. Rain and snow fall down, Leaves fall off trees and down to the ground during autumn. Heavy things sink in water. The list is endless. If I take this hammer and this feather and drop them at the exact same time, 
we notice that the hammer hits first. Well, why is that? If your answer is that it's heavier or that it weighs more, wrong. you would actually be wrong about that. Your challenge is to find out why weight does not matter when it comes to gravity. Consider the experiment done by Commander David Scott during the Apollo 15 moonwalk where he also dropped a hammer and a feather at the same time. Although the only difference is when he dropped them, they both hit the moon's surface at the exact same time. Not all objects are magnetic. Only certain metals such as iron, uh, nickel, or cobalt are attracted to a magnet. Aluminum and copper are not magnetic. Um, other things such as paper, paper, wood, plastics, rubber, and other non-metal materials are also not attracted to magnets. Magnets range in size from very, very large magnets that are used to uh, pick up old cars and junkyards to very, very teeny tiny magnets that look like this. Other things such as credit cards, videotapes, and even computer disks use thin magnetic strips uh, to store the information that they hold. Lodestone is a naturally magnetic piece of iron ore uh, that attracts and repels uh, objects that contain iron. The ancient Chinese were the first to discover that uh, a sharpened piece of steel could be magnetized with a lodestone, and then if it was suspended from a string, the two points would always point exactly north and south. This observation quickly spread to Europe, and the compass became an invaluable tool in navigation. Modern magnets come in a variety of shapes and sizes, which include rods and bars, circles, horseshoes. Uh, they can come in spheres, squares, all sorts of different shapes. The field that surrounds magnets, also called the magnetic field, depends on the size and strength of the magnet. Although a larger magnet does not necessarily mean a stronger magnet. The magnetic field begins at opposite ends called poles, labeled north and south. Or sometimes positive, which is the same as north, and negative, which is the same as south. When two magnets are placed together with the same pole facing each other, Oh no! The magnets will repel each other. If opposite poles are placed together, Oh yeah! The magnets will attract each other. The Earth itself is a type of giant magnet created from a spinning iron core. Many people think a compass will only point north, but that is only true in the Northern Hemisphere. In the Northern Hemisphere, a compass will point toward the magnetic North Pole, but in the Southern Hemisphere, it'll point toward the magnetic south pole. Remember how we talked about the size and strength of magnets? Well, here I have what's called neodymium or rare earth magnets. These are the strongest magnets on earth. Now, 
The strength of a magnet is measured in what's called Mega Goss Orsteds. Say what? But to make it simpler, they just use N for neodymium. Now the strongest neodymium strength you can get is N52, which is what these are. In fact, these are so strong that we actually have to be kind of careful. Did you know that when a magnet breaks like this one just did, each tiny piece of magnet gets its own north and south pole? All right, third graders, that's all we have for you today. All right, let's go learn more about magnetism and gravity.